Danger Dolan. From twists that were so bad that you couldn't help but get angry, to being misled in every way possible, we count 10 of the biggest what the fuck moments in gaming. Number 10, Fallout 3, Tranquility Lane. So chances are you've played quite a bit of Fallout at this point. You've dicked around in the wasteland collecting several metric tons of empty bottles just in case because you're not OCD, you're just making sure you don't miss anything cool like one of those random events you've heard so much about. So when the theme changes and the color goes to black and white, you're already a little unsettled. I mean it's more obvious if not outright told to you that it's all simulation, but you know it's a matrix style thing so you die in there. You die in real life and if that isn't a massive red flag, I don't know what is. So you wander around for a bit and everything actually seems pretty nice, a bit gray, but hey, gray ain't that bad. But then you meet the little girl, or as I like to call her, the little girl, because I have no creativity. But really, she's evil as all buggery. She'll try to make you kill everyone else in the simulation. And it really seems like you have no choice but to do this unless you explore, which you should and probably did do. But the thing is, using the supposed good karma option actually kills everyone too. But it's a mercy killing so your character walks away guilt free. Number 9, Metroid, Samus. If you played this back in the good old days, back when the sun were pure, the TV was fuzzy and an app was a cute way of saying an apple, you would surely know why I'm talking about this here experience because I tell you what it is something that had yet to be seen on the best delivery system, cartridge. But in all seriousness, retro games are really fun and all, but god damn did the past suck. I don't care what you say, broadband is not worth turning your back to. So yeah, basically the whole time I actually thought that Samus was a robot, most people apparently thought it was a guy, but it looked like a robot to me. I mean, why wouldn't you want to play as a badass robot? At the end I was pretty surprised. I mean, who would have thought that Samus was a bird and not a robot? Certainly not I. Number 8, Super Mario Bros 2, The End. In retrospect, it should have been much more obvious than the entire game was a farce. I mean it played nothing like the original. The main goddamn mechanic of Super Mario Bros was that you could jump on, pop and to make them drop then all of a sudden we got turnips. And that asshole who kept telling me the princess was in another castle? But I was a kid, I didn't know better. I read goosebumps and actually felt scared after doing so, but even though I enjoyed the masterful writings of R.L. Stein, I didn't take the it was a dream the whole time thing well at all. I mean it's not like Mario's a narrative experience, but still. If I was dreaming, I would have had robots and a monster that looked suspiciously like a man in a suit chasing me through molasses. But no, Mario dreamed about turnips and quite possibly didn't dream of himself throughout the entire night. Number 7, Call of Duty 4, Nuke. Going to be perfectly honest with you right now, I don't actually like Call of Duty. I'm not that much of a fan of the military shooter scenario. They put on the premise of realism, but then they smear jam all over your eyes like you went to an American school and refused to call it jelly. But with that said, I did give Call of Duty a 4 a go and at least got to this point. I didn't really pay attention to the story much, but I did know what was going on enough to notice that, hey, my guy's actually dead, as in properly dead and now I'm a different dude. I was impressed. They did something that was completely unexpected. Usually the good guys win or at least they die with a heroic sacrifice, but this man was just smeared into ghoul juice without any of that faffing about. He died without really going through a full character arc. It's doubly good when you compare it to the previous Call of Duties which didn't really have stories at all. Number 6, Arkham City, Joker. I was actually pretty bemused when they brought Joker back. It's not like Batman of all people has a shortage of good villains. I mean sure I like him, who doesn't? So I was kind of grumbling the whole way through the game and I actually felt bad about my attitude towards the game. Well actually the whole Arkham City concept was pretty contrived if you ask me. But even still it's a game I'm willing to suspend disbelief at least a little. So when it turned out that good old Mark Hamill actually was dead the whole time, I was completely taken off guard. Sure he might as well have been in the game and it was a bit of a cop out, but I don't hold it against him. Any game that manages to both pleasantly surprise me and tell me I'd been silly the whole time makes me like it all the much more and it really was a what the fuck moment. Number 5, Super Meat Boy, Hell Boss. I was so angry with this game. By the time I was a third of the way through it, I had already learned to ignore the blood remains and ghosts of my mistakes. They were just there to taunt me more and I was bigger than that. I was prepared to let the game's attempt to make me angry pass over my head, but bugger me silly and call me Kelly. 
They took the meat servings that could have fed the entire world for 100 years and made it into a boss. I can't really express how much I love it when games take something that I considered a disconnect between story and gameplay and actually show that they're connected, that the developers actually care about their game and that it wasn't just a way to make me feel inferior about my platforming skills. Number 4. Shadow of the Colossus Whoops, you're a bad guy. Maybe it's just me, maybe it's because I played this before I played Eco, but I really didn't think that the game was actually going to have anything more meaningful than a bunch of really cool puzzle giant fights with a happy ending. I mean, obviously I'm not alone in not seeing the ending come, but I feel like if you came into this game expecting less story than A Link to the Past, you got way more impact out of its ending. The fact that it feels so blatantly obvious that it was a trap the whole time after I fucked it all up is all the better. Basically, like it outsmarted me in the best way possible. I just assumed it was saying, I'm just a fun game, sorry about the lack of story. But no, it was going for art, and I was staring at my smartphone laughing about this vandal called Banksy getting an exhibit. Number 3. Eternal Darkness Sandini's Requiem Breaking the Fourth Wall This wasn't the first game to break the fourth wall, but it was the first one to do so that it actually worked with the feel of the game. Don't get me wrong, Psycho Mantis was cool as a walrus whiskers, but this really added to the fear in the game. It even made me question my sanity at least a little. Because when you start having the game mute, or getting a disc read error, or having a girl's head pop off, you genuinely start to ask, is my GameCube broken? Is it part of the game? Or wait, am I going off my knockers? If any horror game makes you ask that, even for a nanosecond, it's doing something so very right, and I honestly scream, WHAT THE FUCK, when the GameCube had an error. Number 2. Spec Ops. The line. The ending. It isn't until the ending when you realize just how very fucked up the main character is. I mean, a big thing about a soldier is that if you follow the rules and the orders, you're not really to blame. Sure, many people have issues convincing themselves of that, but it's a big part of it. So when everything else is gone from the main character's life, at least you could think, I was just following orders. But then they took that away too. Turns out he was more fucked in the head than a thirsty camel near glory hole. It really made the game for me. Sure, the white phosphorus scene was amazingly depressing and poignant, but it felt like just another bad thing this dude is going to have to talk about in therapy. But when the ending came along, I couldn't see any path to redemption. This man could take without at least a decade of medication plus therapy and then dedicate the rest of his life to charity organizations. Number 1. Metal Gear Solid 2 Raiden Fucking Kojima. He makes some crazy ass stories that are hard not to love, but when he pulls a complete head fake and makes you play as a brand new character without any preparation, while also making you think you get to play as that old badass snake again, I genuinely believe that if he didn't pull this move, people would actually talk about the intended what the fuck moment at the end. But we're not talking about that because he wanted to fuck with us right from the beginning. You even got to play as Snake in the demo. Snake was on the cover. All of the marketing and hype made you excited to play as Snake in a new adventure. It's a damn shame too because the story is actually really fun if you ignore this moment. But how can you? It's the biggest what the fuck moment in all gaming. You can't just go and ignore it. That's it for this countdown. And have a go